Hello and welcome to a new video about control engineering. This time we are going to talk about transfer elements. Like last time, yeah? we had these transfer elements and we said, okay, there is a system, yeah? there are certain inputs, there are certain outputs, we have some restrictions and so on. Yeah? And now we want to describe the system in a mathematical way. This is our goal today. However, we want to make this a little bit easier for us and so we restrict the number of inputs and the number of outputs to one. Uh, so we are transferring one input to one output. Well, this is, this is enough for us. Yeah? Let's draw this. Yeah? So there is our system. Then we have our input xi and we have the output xo okay so that's xi variant in time of course and that's the, our resulting output xo from t yeah? and we want to know uh, we want to know how the output might be influenced by the input. Uh, so what actually what we want to have written there is that there is somewhere written XO equals. Okay. A very simple thing would be XI. So XO equals XI. This would be easy, right? Yeah. And we could even scale it. So we write R0, some factor multiplied by XI shall be XO. Okay. This would be one possibility. Okay. So that the output is the input but scaled by some factor. Maybe this is an amplifier, something like this, yeah. Or maybe this is a spring, and I put the spring together, yeah. And the output is the force of the spring. The more I, I compress the, the spring, the more force I have. Yeah? This would then be the spring constant here, this R0. Okay. But not only, not only the input might have an influence, but also the change rate of the input. So if it's changing very fast, then the output might be different than it's changing very slow. So we are adding not only the input, but also the change rate of the input. So the change rate of the input is the derivation to time. And it looks like this, dxi divided by dt, or derived to dt. And we could also scale this with r1. Huh? So this might look like this. Yeah? r1, r0 multiplied by input plus r1 multiplied by the change rate of the input. But there's not only the change rate, there's also the, also the change rate of the change rate and the change rate of the change rate of the change rate and so on. So we can think about that there is much more. Huh? There's much more that we can even have and we will not limit this. Yeah? So at some derivation, there might be the second derivation, the third derivation and so on, yeah? and up to the nth derivation. Yeah? So all those things could maybe influence our, our output. Okay. Maybe the output is also influenced by the history of this input. Yeah? Not only by the current values and the change rate of them, but also by the history. Yeah? So maybe we can even look into what happened up to now. Yeah? So we could maybe integrate the input Huh? 
looks like this. Yeah? And we can even scale this. Scaling is always a good idea. Okay? We could even scale this. Yeah? And if we extended it in this direction, we could also extend it in the other direction. So maybe it's not only the first integral, maybe it's the second integral. So two times integrated, yeah? another scaling factor f2 plus and so on. Yeah? So xo might be influenced by all those inputs and derivations of the input and then summarizing of input and the input itself. Yeah? However, we might not only influence the output we might also influence the change rate of the output. So the input might not only influence the output, but also the change rate of the output. This means we could add here the change rate of the output as well, yeah. simply by adding it. And we will also scale this with a factor t1. Yeah. And on the other side, we can also go into the extremes yeah, up to a factor tm. Yeah, multiplied by the m's derivation of xo. Uh, so this would be the differential equation. Handy, isn't it? Isn't it handy? So the change rate of the, the, the change rate of the output and the output and whatever change rate of the change rate of the change rate of the change rate might be influenced by the input, the change rate of the inputs up to the change rate of the change rate of the change rate, blah, 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 yeah? and the history of the input. Wow! Wow! Yeah? This is the representation of the differential equation of a transfer element. Yeah? I promised you it's going to be easy, right? <laughs> so this is then the differential equation. Let's have a look at this differential equation. Yeah? All those factors, yeah? all those xi's and, and xo's, xi's and o, they are only in linear terms in there. Yeah? So they are only there, there is no xi squared, there is no xi th the third and so on. There is only xi and xo's yeah? and the derivation and, and, and the summation of them. Yeah? In, but there is no xi raised by the power of whatever. Yeah? This is because we said our system theory is only for linear systems. Okay? This is reflected in the differential equation by only using plain terms of xi and xos. Okay? This is why. So this is already done. And also those factors R0, R1, up to Rn, F1, F2, up to F whatever, T1, up to Tm, they are only factors. Yeah? They will remain constant. They are not depending in time. So these are not time-depending factors. So this means our system here is also, is also time-invariant. So it will not change over time. Okay? It will remain the same system, time-invariant system. This is, then we can select here plain numbers and not just functions in T. Yeah. Like I said, our restrictions here, they are also reflecting in our differential equation somehow. Yeah. And <laughs> at first I joked, I promised you it's going to be simple. Yeah. Of course this does not look simple, also not for me. Yeah. But common, common things never look simple, yeah? because simply so many cases are covered by those common things. Yeah? If something should be valid everywhere in all cases, then it looks complicated. I mean, it's clear. Yeah? So let's make an example. Let's make an example which might calm you down again a little bit. 
Okay. So let's think about the following, following situation. We have some heat sink. So we have some heat sink, some aluminium heat sink, radiator somehow. Yeah. Shall look like this. Maybe it's looking like this. So this should get rid of heat simply, yeah? heat sink, yeah? because underneath we have some, I don't know, let's say we have some integrated circuit, yeah? we have some integrated circuit, there are the, so it's just some electrical equipment or maybe Maybe it's not even electrical, maybe it's a gearbox or something like this and we didn't need to get rid of the heat. Yeah? Doesn't really matter. For us, this is a heat sink. Okay? And this heat sink is produced of aluminium aisle. Huh? And it shall have a mass of 0 0.7 kilograms. Uh -huh. This is the mass of my heat sink. And we know the thermal capacity of, uh, of aluminium. Yeah? This is 897 joule by kilogram and Kelvin. What is this thermal capacity? This means I would, if I want to raise the temperature of a block of aluminium by one Kelvin, yeah? and this block has one kilogram, I would need 897 joule of energy to do so, to heat it up. Okay? If I want to cool it down, I have to get rid of 897 joule by kilogram. Yeah? If then I'm cooling down it, one, one, one Kelvin. Yeah? If I'm cooling it down, if I'm cooling down this 0 0.7 kilograms, I only need 70% of this. I hope this is clear. Yeah? Our aluminium heatsink does have an excessive temperature. Yeah. So this is the excessive temperature of the aluminium heatsink. Because of this excessive temperature, it will radiate heat. Yeah. If, it's, if it's warmer than the surrounding, it will radiate heat. This is the task of this. Huh? And this heat radiation, this will be done with the thermal, so-called thermal resistance, RTH, yeah, of 1.5 Kelvin by Watt. Yeah. If we have an over temperature of 1.5 Kelvin, yeah, we will radiate 1 Watt. If we add 1 watt, we will have a over temperature of 1.5 Kelvin. Okay. So actually, our radiated power, uh, so there is PR, our radiated power, this is our excessive temperature divided by the Thermal resistance. Okay. So this is how many watts I can get rid of. The higher the excessive temperature is, the more watts I can get rid of. Okay? That's it. And here, from our cooling element, there is power added to the heatsink. Yeah, because this is the power I actually, this is the part I want to cool, so it will the power will go to the heatsink, will heat up the heatsink, the heatsink, because then there is excessive temperature, will start to radiate. Yeah. So this aluminium heatsink will heat up. And we said, okay, we have aluminium, so we have a mass of aluminium and we have a thermal, uh, thermal capacity of aluminium. Yeah? 
This means the amount of thermal energy I have in my aluminium yeah, equals, yeah, equals the mass of aluminium multiplied by the capacity of the aluminium multiplied by the change of the temperature. Yeah? This means if I want to have a change of the temperature of one degree, like said, yeah, and I have this mass and this heat capacity, I am I have to use this amount of of thermal energy huh? of heat. Okay, this amount of thermal energy is nothing more than the power I have to heat it up. This aluminium yeah, multiplied by the time it will it will be applied. Yeah? So this delta T is the time this power is applied to our aluminium. So we are adding this amount of heat, yeah? this and this is actually the same. Yeah? So we are adding this amount of heat, and so we are heating this aluminium up to this level. Uh, this amount of kelvins, we will rise the temperature. What is the total power? What is the power which is remaining? The power which is remaining to heat up the aluminium is the power we are adding minus the power we are radiating. Clear, right? Uh, so if we are adding power and radiating power, the difference between those two will be the power which is available to heat up the aluminium. If we radiate more than we add, yeah, this total power is even negative and we will cool down the aluminium. If we add more than we radiate, then we this, this total power will be positive and we will heat up the aluminium. Okay? So actually this total power is the added power, which is actually actually this one, yeah? plus the radiated power. If I find my color, the correct one, radiated power. Yeah? Minus, of course. Oh God, of course minus. Yeah? Just added minus the one which is gone. Yeah? Now let's fill this in. Yeah? So this PV will stay, will stay the same. This is just the power we want to get rid. Minus. And now this one. Excessive temperature divided by the thermal resistance. Yeah? Here. This is the source of this. Okay. Now let's add it to this to this equation here. Yeah? So we said we have the mass of aluminium multiplied by the thermal capacity of aluminium multiplied by the change of the excessive temperature yeah? equals and now we have the total power which is this. multiplied by delta t. Yeah? I will now get rid of this delta t. I will simply bring this to the other side. So I will divide by delta t. Yeah? So on this side it's written m aluminium delta excessive temperature divided by delta t equals pv from t minus Okay, now this one, yeah, I will do now the infinitesimal. I will make this delta t infinitesimal small. Yeah, so I will not use delta divided by delta. 
I will use d divided by d. Yeah? So I will use this as, as a derivation. Yeah? So this is M aluminium multiplied by C aluminium multiplied by the excessive temperature derived to T. Okay. Now I will multiply with RTH yeah, because I don't want to this. Yeah. So it's written RTH multiplied by PV minus excessive temperature equals M aluminium C aluminium RTH and now the derivation of the excessive temperature. Now I separate the variables. Yeah? So actually it's written RTH multiplied by PV minus uh, no, equals of course and now we have excessive temperature plus M aluminium C aluminium RTH and the derivation of the excessive temperature. And we said our excessive temperature, our, our input is, is our power losses from our system. Uh, gearbox, integrated circuit, whatever. Yeah? Our power losses is the input to the system and the output of the system is the over temperature, the temperature, the excessive temperature. Yeah? So if I'm using now the colors again yeah, for the input, input was green, yeah? so this PV was green. And output, I've used blue color. I just have to find the blue pen. Yeah? So it's excessive plus and the rest are factors. So there is RTH multiplied, there is no factor, and there is M aluminium. C aluminium, RT. Okay. And now let's have a look at our differential equation. Okay. Here is our differential equation. Now it's just the other way around. This is unlucky, whatever. However, I think you can manage it. Yeah. So our XI, the green one. So this here, this. This one, this is our R0. This is this factor huh? here, XO. There is no factor, yeah? and this here, the first derivation to time of the output. Yeah? This here is T1. Okay, so from all our differential equation, we have in our common form. Eh? Only two little tiny things are left simply. Eh? So our, our differ differential equation now looks like this. Eh? We have then with the black oh man Ah, uh, here. <laughs> too many pens. I have too many pens simply. Yeah? We have then here T1 multiplied yeah, by DXO from T, DT plus XO from T. This is this part. Yeah? Equals R0 multiplied by xi from t. This is the differential equation now limited applied to this example. Yeah? And if we take all those given things we can calculate t1, we can totally calculate r0. Yeah? r0 is e easy, it's 1.5 and, and t1 would be, let's see if I can find 
here my calculator. No, of course not. Yeah, yeah you can do it if you like. 0 0.7 multiplied by 1.5 multiplied by almost 900 get something. Yeah. So actually 0 0.7 multiplied by 1.5 would be 10.5 so it's factor 10 let's say 10 so it's 8900 whatever seconds. Yeah. This is T1. Oh, I already mentioned seconds. Yeah. Why I mentioned seconds? This will be clear to you in the following videos. Right now, I'm already satisfied. If you could have followed this differential equation and this one example, which we turned out, this is the rest, and we could even describe the behavior of a heat sink with this. Yeah. yeah. Next time we learn something, how we can solve differential equations. You probably heard or you probably learned how to solve differential equation in your math classes. However, we will do it slightly different. We will do it with the, with the Laplace operation, Laplace transformation. How this is working will then be in next video. For this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.